r slash ask reddit. What do you miss about the early internet? When a lot of people put up content and spent a lot of time making something online just for the sake of doing so instead of following some formula for success. When people weren't concerned about using the internet to make money and get big and were just exploring this new media. Searching for something and getting several results that were just people's personal web pages they made because they liked the topic. I still remember searching for stuff about Star Wars action figures and finding www.wiseacres.com. There's not much on the page now, the Star Wars stuff is all at rebelscom.com now, but it still has the old to me internet look. He also used to have a live webcam feed of him in his office and you could click a button and it would notify him and he'd wave at the camera. I think we traded, or maybe I bought some action figures from him. Just stuff like that in general, when it was people making sites about their interests for the fun of it, rather than trying to build their brand, or whatever. Helpful forums with a sense of community. I mean you had to dig for it, but you'd find these forums where you could ask for advice on stuff, be it a game, writing, movies, whatever, and they were like these little insulated worlds. Like picking up a rock and watching what was under it, it was this whole thing. There were big names who cycled around, and everyone ended up knowing everyone after a while. Now it seems every forum I enter is just a bunch of people yelling at each other. There's no community. There's no need for it. People wander in for like, two days, then vanish. I miss that community feel. The sheer freedom we had, and the amount of crazy junk that was easily found nowadays everything feels like it's behind barriers. This might sound needlessly convoluted, but I miss when there was a clear divide between being online and offline. When going online was something you had to commit to, like you'd just be writing a word document, or playing a game or whatever offline, but would decide I want to go online now to look something up, and would have to click connect. The whole always online thing which has crept up on us over the years does annoy me a little. I remember buying Skyrim from a game store in 2011, probably the last boxed PC game I ever bought, and being annoyed when I came home and installed it only to find that it required me to open it through Steam, even though I'd installed it entirely on my machine from physical discs. In my mind at the time, Steam was a platform for playing online multiplayer games like Counter-Strike. Why on earth would you need it for a locally installed single player game? The lost art of the flash animation. The crappy, but oddly hilarious, animated flash videos. So simple and so weird. Think I'll be no black sheep, nugget duck, and airborne's world. And back when you could search funny cat video on YouTube and actually find one, and not a 10 hour compilation of random cat videos that the channel said was funny for more clicks, or back when regular people were uploading silly or fun videos, and it wasn't all people with sets and producers and making videos for profit. Never knowing exactly what you were going to end up with when downloading things from Napster. I ended up pretty scarred from what I found when I opened up the files. How you'd spend forever crafting the perfect away message on AIM with just the right overly dramatic song lyrics and font and color. And then you change it again in a few minutes. Also, there was a time where your parents didn't have Facebook and posting those pictures of everyone drunk at a kegger wasn't going to get you in serious trouble. Now all those photos are gone because no one wants to get fired for junk we did 10 years ago. Privacy. These days your every move is monitored by some company or another for the sake of gathering personal marketing data where this seemed to be much less the case in the early days. Related to this come all the clickbait, obvious propaganda, etc. Of course, this could just be an impression as I've simply grown more conscious about these things over the years. The fact that you could leave it. Especially with dial up. You went online for maybe half an hour, and then you logged off entirely, and carried on living your life. Now, anytime you're awake, you're connected to it non-stop. Unregistered Hypercom 2 The first GIFs. Everybody remember the dancing baby? When flash games were actually the hottest junk, YouTube was just a worse meta cave 
funny pictures and porn were side by side on several sites. After school MSN chats, where we'd talk about the day and share any new emoticons we'd found. 4chan back, when it was both the funniest and the crappiest place on the internet. Just a few off the top of my head. Laughing at people who had Tom as their top friend on MySpace. People seemed a lot more kind and easygoing even in online gaming. It wasn't as toxic or full of racial slurs and rage. Memes had a way longer shelf life too like the Noma Noma Guy etc. Now memes last for like 2 weeks maximum. And then they are old news slash thought of as unfunny like the show me D-way knuckle stuff which vanished as quickly as it arrived. People just liked being able to connect with others from all over the world. And it was mesmerizing to just have a chat about the weather or food with someone living thousands of miles away all of that is just taken for granted by everyone nowadays. There's far too many angry keyboard warriors around now who only enjoy themselves if they are insulting someone. Less ads. The naivety of it all. Back then. We just loved the novelty of talking to people on the other side of the world. It wasn't about us, it was about the collective whole. I miss those days. Being entertained by things like Badger 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 Mushroom Mushroom I remember those chain letters that people would send in ML send this to 10 more people or you will die in 10 days. I also remember Geocities point common back then everyone's website was a mess of bright fluorescent text on a white background filled with moving GIF animations. People weren't dicks then. Good YouTube without cancerous content. Also fancy pants. Zero's memes. It changed around 2010, but I was used to memes being in video format. Captioned images were just jokes on the internet, rather than specifically being memes. The exceptions to this rule were the motivational posters and images that were captioned with the bold white impact font. Though I don't really hate the current state of memes, I'm just more so weirded out by it. Actually chatting with people on instant messenger. Before smartphones and even permanent cable slash DSL connections, you to sit at your computer and both log onto the internet and log into instant messenger. You knew when someone was on and could chat, and knew that you'd not be bothering them in the middle of something. Also you had no problem ending a chat and just walking away, because you had other stuff to do. Now I feel with everyone online all the time, you don't really have that dedicated chat time like before. Personal websites. Geocities. Angelfire. Free webs. Zoom. When I was in junior high, I could wow people with my self-taught HTML skills. My personal websites had fancy image map navigations and other cool stuff. Nowadays, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn have replaced the personal website. Smaller, independent websites. The average internet experience is now Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Amazon, maybe Twitch. If you compare Twitch to Just In Point TV when it first started, it's just so commercial. There's nothing wrong with that of course, but when I think back to the early web, before big tech companies got their hands on everything, it just seemed less streamlined. The internet has been made smaller by people wanting to limit users to their content. I used to go on a great website called student.com. It was very much early social media, but it felt nothing like Facebook. It felt more like somebody trying to create a community. The admins spoke to the users, not just about side stuff, but just general chat. It felt more like the Wild West, like there was stuff to explore. Now it's just something to scroll down on your smartphone. How cool Zyro Zyro and basically all stick fighting flash videos were at the time. That only relatively tech savvy, relatively intelligent people use the internet. There were some trolls, but you didn't have the hordes of morons that you have now. I know this sounds elitist, but it was sort of a hideout for nerds, old school nerds, when nerd was seen as a bad thing. I absolutely don't want to go back to it, but I do miss when content on YouTube was kinda limited, and the community was tighter because of it. You'd get a cool channel. Sub for sub. Comment. You'd go to their channel. 
could see that they were some 19 year old from Oklahoma that seemed cool enough, so you'd sub, and even though their content sucked and had no consistent theme, you'd watch anyway, because what else was really there that you hadn't already seen? You'd watch this 19 year old upload a new video every few days, just random junk, like him playing guitar, him filming his TV as he played GTA, him uploading videos of JPEG images, just to use them as avatars, etc. And you'd feel oddly connected to this dude in the middle of nowhere, uploading videos of him and his friends doing the cinnamon challenge, and chances are, you never even noticed that he stopped uploading videos, and you don't know how he or any of those people in those videos are doing now. But for a moment in 2006-2007, you felt like you were there in that room, watching him play GTA as his stereo gently hummed it ends tonight by the all-American rejects in the background, as well as the occasional sound of his sister arguing with his mom. And that's ducking crazy to think about now.